think uh, I think we're ready to go. We have yeah. uh, 72 ish people joining and then I think we should be getting a few more as we go. But um, welcome everyone um, to our first edition of um, interviews with local leaders. This is going to be sort of an informal uh, chat. We're going to talk about the new world of, uh, of going online and uh, doing our meetups online and doing webinars, training online. Um, and, and the reason for this is, you know, as you look at the last few crises, you look at 2001, 9-11, uh, you, know, you look at 2008, uh, it, it was horrible. But on the other hand, we came out of it. And it was a new world after that. And uh, the same is going to happen this time, right? We're going to kick the back of this virus and um, we're going to come back out and it's going to be a new world. And all of you are experiencing it already. Tons of meetups. I've noticed uh, a lot of these BNI groups are going online. A lot of chamber meetings are going on. Everybody's going online. So, so that's what this is about. This is about really sharing our experiences with each other. So I'm really happy to have Martin here. Um, we'll we'll jump start in a minute. Uh, what I want to do is tell everybody how to ask questions. So, at the top of your screen, you should see a little arrow pointing to the right. Uh, if if that one if it's closed, then it'll be pointing to the left. Just click on that, and you can just type your questions in. We will take them at the end of uh, this session. So, so let's get started. So this one is going to be about bringing local business meetups online. Uh, next week we'll be talking about, and we'll send you the invitation after this super exciting series. Next week is going to be about uh, virtual events and webinars at scale. So that's going to be fun. Uh, we'll talk about that later, but small business strong. Let's get started. So I am uh, Venkat Krishnamurthy, uh, one of the co-founders and the president of Alignable. I'm a serial entrepreneur. I've started multiple businesses. I'm a technologist. I'm an advisor to many companies, uh, public, private, etc. I'm very passionate about helping entrepreneurs and small businesses, and this is why I uh, started this business in the first place. Uh, and we, you know, we're almost up to five million members. I couldn't be more excited. Uh, we're trying to help as many people through this as we can. So, so that's me. I'm a father of four. I live outside Boston. And, but more importantly, let's introduce our guest, Martin. So Martin, take it away. Hey, great to be here. I'm a success coach, trainer, and author. I'm very passionate about small and micro businesses, and I specialize in people maximizing their relationships on the ground and on the web for greater profitability. I've been in business since I left IBM in 95, and I really ramped up the online and uh, digital marketing ever since. And I believe that small and micro business is the backbone of America. It's the character of our community. It is the people who stay in a town longest and don't pull out. We need to make sure we also communicate our views to our representatives and let them know we vote and we're here. I'm a, I, I will say I'm a, a um, registered independent. That's because I was born and raised in the District of Col Columbia, and I know uh, the, the greatness and sins of both sides. <laughs> And I now live in live in uh, Raleigh with my beautiful bride Barbara. I joined Alignable in June 9th, uh, twenty eighteen. I want to just real brief say my passion for Alignable is is that they are serving the micro business, and I love the word micro business because that to me is the twenty down to one individual business, and their commitment is serving it directly. And I've. I have never had the big guys, starting with an L or F, ever reach out to me and say, we'd like your input. We're committed to improving our business. And I have had that alignment. 100%. 100%, 100%, 100 Martin. That's Good. exactly, that's that's the folks that we want to serve first and yep. foremost. Um, and we're very glad to have you here. So tell us a little bit about your business before you know, this whole coronavirus uh, madness. Tell us a little bit about that. I have a couple of pictures here for you. Yeah, well, this really hit me uh, right in the middle of my social media management certificate program we have at, at NC State, and it's a, a subdivision, and you can learn more about that 
online, but we were in the middle of the class, and we had at least three or four more classes. It was a classroom. We were going well, and there, there the uh, graduates are in the lower right-hand corner there, and then all of a sudden, the world's changing, and I went, well, you know, this literally on a Friday night, and the office wasn't open till Monday, so I'm telling the class, look, Right now, I'm going to figure out on my own how to share what's on the screen from the class, but I can't guarantee you'll get credit until I speak to the office because I need the authority of a, it's a small team or a nonprofit separate entity under the connected with the school. So I go in Monday, I set up my Zoom, I, I make an executive decision, this is okay, and, and find out that 60% of the students are actually online. Not only that, I get in the morning, I talk to the office, and they say, you got our blessing. As long as you can show they were in the class, then we will give them credit. So this That's is like fantastic. changing over, you know, what's over going a weekend. on. Go ahead. Over a weekend, right? Yeah, and over a weekend. And I had to make a decision, you know, am fantastic. I going to take a risk and do this or not? And well, of course, that you know, goes. The great news, the great news is we have all this technology, right? I mean, that's that's the great news. We can go online now. Yes. So we started in hybrid and then we moved to online to finish out the class because once they said it, we immediately said, look, you know, the, that Monday, it, it became clear that we were going to have to be in our homes potentially. And so we went completely online. Thank goodness I have a home studio. I've done this for a while. And we moved to a full uh, online class. And now we're offering the next one as completely online for online. the public. So There you go. So that's what, yeah. that's what all this is about. And yep. so in addition to these uh, classes uh, that you were offering, and some of you caught Martin and me talking at the start of this uh, interview, and he talked about how he's probably going to make up his revenue that he lost. Um, you know, and we'll get to that in just a minute. But you used to run a bunch of alignable meetups, and I, I remember seeing all these pictures over the many months that you were doing it. So tell us, tell us about the uh, pre-social distancing world that you lived in with these meetups, real briefly. Well, I'm on the road very a uh, lot of times, and the idea of just stopping for uh, coffee is very was very difficult. So I said, "Well, does Alignable have on the ground meetups?" And I reached out to them, very responsive, and they say, "Look, go for it if you want to." So I started a test. We had it, and then this is an example of one of. Are we moved to another area? I teamed up with Bill Davis that already had a group after the test work. We had a successful in person. And what I told people is look, you know, everyone wants to meet you for coffee, but sometimes you might wonder is this just a sales pitch or not? Why don't you meet them first at our meet and greet and then make the second meeting in person? Avoid with that and a service. And then, of course, the world changed on it. But this is, we have launched the Alignable meet and greet with wonderful support from Alignable. I wanted to make sure I honored their intention in their brand if I was doing something and volunteering like this. That's and fantastic. they said, run with it, guys. No, that's fantastic. And then, so, so here you are doing these classes. Here you are doing these meetups. And your entire business all of a sudden gets hit with, with COVID. So, so tell us, I mean, you, when I was interviewing you earlier, you were talking about this fantastic group of guys you used to hang out with. Tell us about that whole journey. Yes, yes. I want to tell them it's pretty funny. It's a group of guys that got together inspired by the Ben Franklin Junto concept, and we call us Beer Business and Boys. And, nice. uh, and after that. after the women found out we're doing no harm, we're actually here to be better men, they, they were fine with it. And so this is the picture on the left of part of the gang there. And the guy straight back, Bill Davis, that is just the finest other coach in the town. Uh, I, I met with them and I, I said to him, I said, Bill, why don't we take the alignable and do something with it? And what was fantastic in one meeting, we all were putting our heads together of what are we going to do next? And we really came up with the consensus. We need to all be thinking, don't imagine going back to the old, see this as a reboot and what is the new future we can create with the opportunities, even if we didn't go back the same way. And that, Absolutely. Was, that was the collective that came from it. And that's when Bill goes, well, Bill, I just, 
Bill said, well, I just thought we'd have to cancel the alignable since we're back. And I go, Bill, I got the studio. You've taught classes hybridly. Let's go online. So the, is that would, is that a bottle of Corona next to your meetup? Yes, uh, it is. That's it. Well, <laughs> remember, this is beer business and boys. So right. we are involved the next meetup group. One of our gentlemen in the group, his wife has ALS. And so when he said, I'm game to meet online for the group, that was the first hybrid meeting. So you're seeing us move from the 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 bar to bring your own, any beverage that's legal you could bring is what we said. Excellent. And so that's the meeting there of us moving from in-person online. We still miss the uh, the wings and the fried uh, no doubt fried pickles, of course, from the local no local bar that we go to. So that's yeah. the migrant and the beginning of it. So, you know, when we were talking, you shared this really moving and amazing story with me before we get into the guts of the meetup, I'd love for you to share it with the audience about this roller skating rink. Yes, this is an, a great example of the people that are needing the help the most, that give the character to our community. This is Skyview Skateland and Rocky Mountain. You can Google them as well. And it's second generation. They came to my classes and literally turned their business around from trailing down to one of the highest levels of sales in January they've seen in years. And this is the sister. Uh, and I said, you need to get online and do your own video. And she goes, well, do I have to buy fancy lights? I said, no, go to the hardware store, get a full spectrum light, get a ladder, get a tripod that costs you like 10 bucks. And she goes, I have that for your phone. Sit there and do something live with the students. So I just think this is so endearing. And to me, the heart of creativity of micro business and why we want Congress to be getting funding to them. She was one that failed, her bank failed her in getting funding. Oh, so, I'm sorry to hear know, that. But but she's still standing, you know, and she's not yeah. fighting. She's calling a representative. Well, you know. you know, and what I loved about this is all the reactions and the people she reached, right? Like she can't have these guys show up to skate, but you can bet the relationship that she's had with those customers is stronger than ever. They're going to come back. Well, understand these are these are under 18. These are kids. They're at home. They're doing homeschooling. So here she made her video and here she showed, he shared with me the results of her live feed. She was just blown away that people want. And, and this is to me, creativity and action of micro business. You see no fancy light, you know, and she went live, and That's so fantastic. now she's working for the next. And and yeah. this is this is what it's all about. Fantastic. So 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 let's switch tracks and and get to the sort of the matter at hand, which is and you know all this is a little bit of a setup for you guys to get a real good feel for what Martin's business is like and who he is as a person. Very passionate about small business, and and here we go, right? Like you're in this business of. You know, putting people together, pressing the flesh, meet and greet, exchanging business cards, uh, and then bam, now you're in this whole new world where you're starting to do it all online. So so here's your meetup. Tell us a little bit about it. So this is the second one that's going to happen in, on the 28th. And yes, and you was, all, if you want to join me, you, you can find it on my alignable page. So we'll, But here's the piece to understand. Bill and I talked and went, wait a second. You know, if we get a, a meetup with local businesses, local businesses are wonderfully hearted people and they want to promote whenever they have a chance. So we went, if we just open this up without a structure, it could be anarchy here. We have not done this before. <laughs> And, you know, we could give the stage to one person and they won't let go of the mic. We didn't know. So Bill and I came up with the idea of we're going to structure it with one question and then three people can or we can accept three single sentence answers, single sentence answers to go. And I learned this from another friend uh, that came up with this idea. So that's how we were going to start. So ask a question, need help or anything else, and then people help. Because we build rapport more by letting people contribute to us and helping them than giving a lame elevator speech. So this is something Bill and I know. So we do this, okay, and then we get started and Bill goes, these people have been isolated. I think we could trust them to just introduce themselves. So we say, can you give one run-on sentence introduction for your <laughs> One run-on sentence? Right, right. <laughs> 
and they did a fantastic job. They stepped up to the plate. We modified on the beginning, and they all were great. They were gracious. They contributed. They all, we're all really are in the same boat. I don't have a million dollar swimming pool to hang out and say, I'm in the boat with you, like some do, you know. Right. We're all struggling. And then they shared it, and then we moved to the other. And what Bill and I commitment was keep it going and then bring it down with the closing comments of what they got out of it and what they're doing next, uh, which is, is something, and then moved on. So, so I've, I've heard a lot of interesting, yeah, I've heard a lot of interesting stories about the introduction piece, right? Like when you're in a real meetup uh, with, with sort of people, you know, not everybody's all together listening. It's sort of like going up on stage, right? Like you're talking to everybody. And as you said, small businesses love, all of us love to talk about ourselves. And so this, uh, this is interesting, that one run-on sentence. What was the longest sentence somebody Oh, uh, gosh. I, I, you know, it, I, I do have a recording of it. I'd have to check. But I do want to – you're bringing up a good point of what I learned that we didn't expect out of this. And I'd like to sh share that one. And that was we realized that on this meeting, people said they got to learn and know more people than they would have the in-person. See, See I that's super really interesting. Like that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So that's interesting, right? Like you, you have these meetups and sometimes you end up talking to one or two people and that's it. And, and here you're in front of the whole crew. So I really see the value. So we're, we're right now on remote, but maybe we'll do a hybrid when it gets back. We don't know, but we had, we had the largest turnout of any and our design, Bill and I, is we want a small group. In Raleigh, this is a big area. They have a lot of one where they pack the room and they're millions, you know, hundreds of people. We don't want that. We want this intimate and small. And we still got it with this group. So that was an exciting thing. I do want to tell you something I learned that I wish I had set up better too. Mm -hmm. And, yep. and that's a lesson learned. I wish we're working for the next one to set up a chat on Alignable that we can move to. Mm. So there's a follow on afterwards. And that's something I want. We're going to, I'm going to talk with the team to double check. I've got that and working with it. But that's to me, I really wanted, now where do we move? I have a initial Facebook group I set up just because in the beginning there, I didn't know there was even chat on Alignable the way there is and sent them to that. But I'd really like to move them back to Alignable Excellent. and have a conversation. So we, that's we'd something like, yeah. we'd like to do next. Yeah, that's great. We'd like that too. And, and what, you know, next, next, the next one we're going to do, the next webinar is going to be, uh, about people like, you know, extremely large scale meetups. And there's a whole different dynamic and different learnings to that. But I love the fact that, you know, in these intimate gatherings, which happen all around the country all the time, you make these real personal connections with people, right? And so how do you, how do you make that happen in the digital world? Like the one-on-one, -on -one? I, I mean, I get the fact that everyone's talking to each other, but how do you get that sort of one business contact you met on a Tuesday evening that led to a whole bunch of business later on. So how do you make those connections? Well, to me is just to set up a free Zoom account and connect to them through that. I mean, they can use others, but uh, we can do meetings virtually. Like my associate does merchant services. He's saying I'm the touchless you know, guy for it. And so he's meeting one-on-one -on -one with clients over Zoom mm. to do the equivalent of a coffee meeting. Got it. Especially right now. So we have the capability. And frankly, uh, everyone should be doing this. Now, I want to just tell you, this is our time to also speak up of the digital divide of the more rural areas that Interesting. really need better structures too. Yep, yep. And that's what this is revealing is how there's one guy that literally he's got something that looks short of dial up in his area. Now Ouch. he's smart enough that he created a antenna and a booster to pick up the Wi-Fi, and he's going to consider being an internet provider for his neighborhood because the cable service is such a fail. Oh my! That, uh, it's it, you can't do anything. So this is revealing some good things that really needed to be changed, and yeah. we've got to look out for that because we are the small town <laughs> micro business people, and and so that's going to bring attention to it. Yeah. Yeah, no, one of the questions, Martin, that, you know, when we were talking earlier, which I love that you said, is like you were 
you were being an active matchmaker. Like you were actually, you and um, your yeah. organizers were actually yeah. keeping track of like what different people were saying. And you were sort of more active in saying, hey, you should meet this other person and making those connections. Yes. And, and to me, I started a outline of what I thought was an effective alignable meet and greet. And I realized you better have someone in the group that is okay standing at the front and greeting people because not everyone thinks like that. They're like, oh, I started the party. I'm going to be in it. So you need the experience of a host. Luckily, Bill and I are just like that naturally. Yeah. And so you need people to be point to work to make connections and introductions, I think, to really make it effective. And I'm just grateful I've got Bill Davis as an associate here where we both have that commitment. And I think that's very important. And All of us and need our Bill you, Davis, don't we? Yeah, that's right. And we <laughs> both have that approach. You know, we're looking, you ought to meet so-and-so. You guys, and the 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 key on, on this is don't just look for next client to match up. Look for people that could align, like alignable, as partnerships to work together for clients. That's the go golden goose, not just the golden egg. And that's what you guys reiterate, that networking is not about pitching. Networking is about being of value and find someone you can work together yep. to build trust on. Well, and, you know, the network that, that you helped and that you brought along to this point is the network that's going to help you come out of this, too. Yes, and I'm so excited about this. But this was, to me, an example of starting. The crisis hit me just like the other. And I do have to tell you, I woke up, and overnight, thousands of dollars just was gone. Speaking engagements and everything were canceled right after it. And I was determined. I have two virtual uh, team members and I was determined to keep us afloat. And I said, you know, we had a meeting and I go, we need to reinvent as fast as possible. And you did. Yeah. And you did. So, um, you know, how did you feel about sort of that? I don't know. This is a hard, hard or fuzzy question. You know, you have this sort of sense of a human connection when you're around people, right? D did you really feel that over here? before and after there's sort of this glow you get right like when you meet people in real life and so tell me about that side of it like yeah and you, and you want to go back to this you want to meet more and more like do people yeah. want to meet you know keep doing this smaller groups bigger groups like what are some of the big takeaways for you from after this um, well the you know? big takeaways is i was not born in the world of texting so i want to be fair to younger people who i think might be better at building connections digitally i was of the world of meeting in person i need more um i get more data if i'm in front of you and then i get a little less if we're over a, a webinar with a picture and audio, and then I get a little less if it's just on the phone, and then a little less over text. So to me, this isn't a replacement for being in person, but it is the next best thing because I feel I get more of a connection. I can see your facial experiences. I can see what's yes, going on. You exactly. know, and, and I can't do, I'm not, I want to be fair to the younger people. I can't get that through texting. I just can't get the full emotional data yeah. for me to be appropriate and respond. And, and I want to be fair. They may be able to do it. You know, I want to, I don't want to act like the old guy that, you know, that, you're not that old, my friend, you're, you're, yeah. you're, you're acting like a young guy. So let's talk, <laughs> let's talk a little bit about, uh, before, you know, I'd love to sort of open it up to questions. There's a bunch of different folks that are starting to talk about this. Yeah. Uh, tell me about sort of how you're going, what are you going to do next? Obviously, you you're going to do keep doing this online now well but what well, are you going to do differently like is your introduction going to be different is your networking method going to be different what are you going to do differently well i give a good example of something i i'm reinventing every day so i just gave a talk for job hunters this morning showed my linkedin profile and go i wonder if i should change instead of a large crowd of people is the picture maybe a large group in a zoom type meeting or something so mm -hmm. i'm I'm looking at it through a filter. What if this is the new norm? 
What if it is? is. And then how do we make the connection? And I want to add one more thing. I'm still a people person. I am so blessed. I have a wonderful bride here. I have friends that are isolated and they're, you know, they trust me if they're going, I'm having a hard time. So an example in our neighborhood of what we did is we have a cul-de-sac and we've set up a get together. Oh, that's great. Feet apart. And I'm going to have, I'm inviting some of the guys over Saturday, say, bring your own cigar. We'll be in my front yard, you know, and five of us will well, be, there, you know. I hope, I hope that part of the new normal changes because yeah. I, yeah, I would right. be sitting six feet apart from my friends. But, right. but your point is well taken, right? It's, it's we adapt and, yeah. and uh, we get to this new normal. So, uh, first of all, thank you for all of that. I want to open it up for questions yeah. if that's good for you. Um, let's just start looking over here. Uh, oh, you asked one way I'm redirecting. Let me have one sentence. Sure. You know, one is I've completely, I, I, I had informally a team of people that all could do everything on helping people from set up studios all the way to training on Zoom. I'm putting it together formally as we speak. So we got editors creating a new page for Martin Brossman Associates. They'll be up in a week, you get it, and pulling a team. And one guy in amateur radio, out of work, uh, fell up. I said, look, why don't you set up a business and help people with the troubleshooting? There you remotely, go, small you business. Is so about. he's already on board. So I'm just, that's an example of, you know, you asked, what are we doing now to tool? I'm building, a, rearranging the team yeah. as we speak. Anyway, let's hear some All more right. people. Enough yeah, about absolutely. that. So let's see here. So Margo writes in and says, what is the best way to get the word out about our meetups since everybody is online? Uh, she's doing her third meetup this Saturday. So congrats, Margo, on that. But what? how do you get the word out about your meetups, Martin? Well, I'll tell you, nothing works better than personal invitations. So when you're starting out until you get enough critical mass and momentum, mm. you need to go to people and say, I would like you to meet up. So you might go on Facebook and message, John, I'd like you to be here because of that. Or Alignable. Or alignable, yes. Or your Actually, phone alignable text. would be better. Let's be corrected on it. Yeah, I so think you so. would go into your alignable team and you might go in and say, I would like, in fact, it's really funny. I'm doing that now when I'm connecting to people and alignable, I'm going through because I've got a big enough recognition they're coming to find me. And I'm going through and I'm putting a note saying, I'd like you to join me on the next alignable meet and greet online. That's- that's so good. You see, that's going out. I'm cut and paste it, but I try to personalize it a little bit as well. And yeah. then I'm sorting for who's in my area first before I go outside the area. So I've got right. enough so you're of doing a the plan. Stuff, right? I get a lot of people wanting to connect. Right. And so that's where, because that's it. To me, that's giving value, not a sales pitch. The worst is I connect to someone and there's yeah. this blob that long of a sales pitch. Yeah. I just want to run from that person. Yeah. Yep. Well, and, and uh, le- let me use your technique and also remind yep. people there's going to be another fantastic webinar uh, next week. We, uh, we will send you an invite uh, as well. It's going to be a slightly different take. It's going to be about um, virtual networking, webinars, multi-location, multi-state type of stuff, so all kinds of fun stuff. All right. So Kara asks, how many people attended your meetup? How many people are attending your meetup? So in our beginning meetup, it could have been from eight to 18 to give you in the person. Oh, in and person. Yep. In person. And that's fine because we wanted smaller. You know, it wanted to get a few. And also people, this was new and alignable. I mean, when I started, I could find no case study, but you were great in saying, great idea, run with it, we'll help you. And, send and we you, sent you t-shirts too. Well, right? you sent you a t-shirt and the wonderful deck too. That, yeah, yeah. That the deck networking yeah, group absolutely. used this week. And, uh, but anyway, you sent me, so we got that, but we jumped from that to 35 in our first and there were, there were, in our community. So it was 35 people in your community online. The biggest Business. group ever yeah. immediately because the, the demand was there. So, well, so, so on that, on that, uh, Bonnie is asking, how often are you setting up your local meetups? I'd love to get more involved with these online networking groups. I've made some excellent connections uh, on Alignable, even more so than uh, LinkedIn, but okay, let's that that's a separate question. But uh, how? So let's say someone like Bonnie wants to set up a local business meetup. What advice do you have for her? 
Well, my advice is listen for where the holes are. Where is something not served? Pick a topic that's not being served. And to me, the alignable meet and greet at the time was not served. That was an area that wasn't served in person. So maybe have a theme or a topic that occurs that there seems like people need it from building relationships, but no one's serving that and jump in. I call that my Aikido of marketing is mine. Look for the holes where something's not served, where in the best you know it's needed. and and then start some conversations. If I do Excellent. it, would you do it? So you build a fan base before you ever release it. Got it. Uh, do you have to have a purchased membership to do an online meetup on Alignable? No, Ken, you don't. Uh, you can leverage uh, your relationships as they are. Uh, we will send you details. PPP and EIDL, a uh, separate topic. We uh, There's a bunch of content on our resource center mm -hmm. uh, that you can take a look at it. Let's see, someone from a chamber of commerce. Well, a lot of, a lot of thank yous. So thank you, Martin. Uh, Gail says, I lead a team of 25, 225 real estate agents. I'm here to learn ideas to give them on how to stay connected in this new world. Gail, we're going to be starting a, uh, we have actually a group called Local Leaders at Alignable.com. I'm honored to be one. Yeah, local leaders at alignable.com. Please email us on that one, and we will be sending out a bunch of useful presentations and content uh, as well through that list. So please sign up for that. Uh, Sunil writes, and Sunil's going to be talking next week, but Sunil writes, what are some simple steps to start an online event? So again, back to sort of like the starting. It looks like a bunch of questions about starting going on here. Can I uh, add one? It's the same thing I teach in crowdfunding. Yeah. You build the crowd before you announce the event. This is the key. You concept. build the crowd before the event. Yeah, yeah. You got it. So I'm talking one on one with allies and strategic. Say, I'm thinking about doing this. What do you think? So mm -hmm. they have a way to contribute and get buy in. So when I turn it on, I go, I'd like your help if we do it. And they go, I'm ready, Martin. I'm ready to jump. And if you've invested in people enough over time, they're eager to help you. If mm -hmm. you haven't and you only thought about yourself, then you got to go back and do some rudimentary networking, which is invest in people. So you have that social capital to call on in challenging times like this. Right. Riyadh asks a question. How would you go about pre-qualifying the people you would like to meet up online without appearing selective? So that's an interesting question. That's a really interesting question. You know, the one thing is we want to make sure that if we have qualifications, it's up front and it's fair to join. Because right. we never want to look. I am I'm I grew up in DC. Uh, you know, I believe that diversity is critical and that if I don't make a conscious intention to create it, I will collect with just people who look just like me. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's very important. Be fair, be consistent, be upfront with your rules, and then make sure the consequences are fair and people agree on for executing. I hope that gave her an answer to start. Yeah, that oh, was that's a great excellent. question. Yeah, that's excellent advice. That's a great question. Thank you. Um, and Jeff wants us to limit ourselves to one run on sentence each. So thank you, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't do that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. So let's see. Uh, Lots of other questions here. I want to start a meetup group in Florence, South Carolina. Where do I start and how in Alignable? Jeff, I think that Gabe is going to be in touch with you for that. Uh, we will figure out how to help you out there. Uh, Gabe, if you wouldn't mind uh, reaching out to Jeff, that'd be great. Gabe's great. I just want to tell you. I love yeah, you. He said, by the way, I forgot to introduce him. My, my bad. Gabe's in the background fielding all the questions here. Tom asks, how large of a geographic area do you expect to draw attendees from? Are you keeping it very local or not? Well, that's a great one. Now, we're initially, and I'm allowing some other people in, but I really am trying to make the core in within, within the state and area right now. 
because it's something, you know, North Carolina has a geographical state. Our main connection goes from Raleigh out to Charlotte to the Outer Banks. So I'm a working to keep within like a two hour drive business, but I'm not going to tell someone to stay away if they put well, and add value line for them. But I'm so Martin, given all ideas. this value, given all this value that you're offering clearly to your uh, meetup and so on. Would you consider doing non-geographic meetups? Oh, I mean, absolutely. You, you can now, right? No, absolutely. I wouldn't give it out. It's just bandwidth. I'm doing, yeah. uh, you know, there's a lot of working on retooling the business in the background that has to be put in place. So I just want to make, I'm big on don't start a group more often than you can be consistent with. So right now, that's my a good rule. allows once a month. Now you got a great guy doing a weekly meet and greet, and I'm embarrassed I forgot his name, but he I just was in his his me. He's wonderfully pro um, uh, the, uh, alignable, but you know I went. He's he's doing it once a week. So he's consistency, consistency, consistency you know, is the key. I would rather you do it less often and but, create some scarcity than just knock out something you can't consistently do. So mine Got it. at the moment, my bandwidth with the team is once once a month at this so time. That's great advice. So consistency and quality over trying to expand your reach. Yes, that's what so many people build businesses so fast and the, their infrastructure can't support it. Excellent. So let's take a last couple of questions before we wrap it up here. So as an introvert, I'm in my element with virtual summits. I look forward to it on the Alignable platform. Fantastic. Would it be more beneficial to bring people from other platforms to Alignable or focus on the connections on Alignable? What do you say to that? Well, everyone should join Alignable. There you go. Thank you. That, that's good. Um, <clears throat> all right. How do you engage people you may not know personally to join a meetup? Jason asks. Well, to me is... What is the value you're providing, just like as a business? So try to lead with value. And I always like to have something that would be worth their attention beyond whatever I'm pitching as a beginning piece. So it might be an educational piece you provide and then learn more from joining our event. So do your best to lead with value first. And yeah. that's, to me, the most important piece. I mean, that I seems to be one of your fundamental rules of life is lead with value, right? I, in every interaction, I've seen that with you as well. Yeah. So You know, I, I want to say, to me, I used to tell people in networking, do you leave the house alone or with a team of people? If you leave the house, the house alone, then why should anyone care about you? So it's a yeah. fundamental wake up. But I it's not without discernment. I will give everyone a sample. But then I listen, are they someone who just takes or did they also give and take? So there is discernment here. This isn't, the, you know, in charity or tithing at your church, that's different. But this is business. So right. we must have discernment. We have limited time in life. To, to right. Get. Excellent. Uh, last question. Uh, and I'm sorry I couldn't take all. There's a tons of questions here, but uh, we have a time limit as well. So I'm going to do one more question and don't worry we're going to have another fantastic webinar next week all of you should attend that but the question is i'm uh karen writes i manage a retail shop and we are having a virtual cocktail party night tonight oh all right excellent we even have a bartender teach how to make a french 75 so i don't know how to make that that's interesting would it be sustainable or appropriate to have other guests mostly clients customers to introduce themselves Hmm. Oh, oh my gosh, that was, uh, yes, I love it. I mean, bring in experts, bring in someone remotely to speak. You know, the the uh, birthday party I did, I brought the head of a nonprofit in, a small one, to speak to my birthday party, uh, Michelle. Mo Your birthday party. Yeah, I just did one that had huge turnout. And there's a, a it's a, a nonprofit called the Bob Moog Foundation that educates kids based on her dad made this analog synthesizer of the Moog. And I said, would you come to my birthday party? I set up a GoFundMe. We raised $500. And she said, yes. And now I volunteer with them, but she's very busy with international demands. She had to lay off all her staff at the museum. Oh, that's too you know, bad. There's a, she has a lot on her shoulders. And she's not only went, she had the, the greatest thing for so me. So she was a guest speaker at your birthday party? Yeah. And, and, and there's no meeting. 
So Zoom birthday party, and then everybody contributed to her GoFundMe yeah. from there. We raised 500 bucks. Nice. Which well, is, you know, in a micro business, that that's really critical. That is critical. So, okay. You know, that's an example. Yep. All right. So there are many more questions. We will. There's a bunch of people asking about the next webinar. We will email that out to everybody that's registered here. Uh, local leaders at alignable.com. One word, local leaders at alignable.com. Send us a note. Uh, we are going to be generating a ton of content, how to's, interviews. So definitely sign up. Uh, Martin, I would like to extend a big thank you for being our first guest. Uh, the future. Let us know how you like this. This is a new format for us, so we're new to this as well. So we're doing this interview style with a couple of slides, etc. Uh, I hope it was useful. There will be a time to give you a blog post and you know rules and all of that good stuff from the learnings from this. Uh, we will definitely send all that stuff out separately. But the purpose of these um, uh, webinars is really to have that conversation uh, with uh, the leaders amongst our amongst our group. So. Thank you, Martin. Thanks, right. everybody. And I attending. add one more sentence in here before yes. we go. Yeah. I'm welcome, on one more run. I'm welcome to connect with anyone alignable. And if you don't have the ability to connect, uh, send me your email on alignable to martin at martinbrossman.com. I have a, a paid account so I can then connect to you. And I want you to know keep giving feedback of what you love about alignment and areas to improve because they're listening, they care, and they're committed to our community. So that's what I like to end on. And thank you for all that you're doing to help small business and micro in America and, and, and Canada now, right? Yes. Yes. U S and Canada. Yes. Yeah. Uh, close to 5 million now. So that's it's, uh, it's a big crowd and absolutely. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that shout out. Everybody stay safe, stay healthy. And, uh, I hope business turns around and is good for all of you. Thanks again. And we'll see you next week.